As we conclude our section on gases, we'll just go through a few other gas formulas or variations that you might encounter. The first one that we'll go through is just a proof that gets us to another version of the ideal gas law. And that is, we'll take PV equals NRT and we'll use this proof that the mass in grams divided by the molecular weight equals N, the number of moles. And so with that, we then will set these pieces so that PV equals mass over molecular weight times RT. And then we'll divide this side by volume and divide this side by volume. And what we end up with is that pressure equals mass in grams of your gas sample divided by the volume that it's occupying times RT over molecular weight. And since mass over volume is density, you can see the gas law represented this way, that the pressure equals the density of the gas times R, which is the gas constant, times T, temperature in Kelvin, over molecular weight. This is not one that you'll likely be directly responsible for, but it is important to be able to go from number of moles to mass over molecular weight and then to realize that if you have quantities like this, it is possible to see them reorganized. You might see a situation where you do have to look at mass per unit of volume and realize that is density. And so this is just sort of a, a simple way of seeing how you can move from the ideal gas equation into other different variations that might involve different looking units and variables. And so here, it's a fairly straightforward proof to get from this over to something that expresses pressure of a gas system in terms of its density and the molecular weight of the individual particles. Then we'll move into something called Graham's Law. Graham's Law is a very important one because what it stipulates is that the velocity of gas particles is inversely proportional to the square root of that particle or compound's molecular weight. And so what we see here is the square root of molecular weight two over the square root of molecular weight one is proportional to the velocity of particles of compound one over the velocity of particles of compound two. So it's an inversely proportional velocity to its square root of the molecular weight. So remember this is a square root. So you'll often see that when you're dealing with compounds that have nice squared molecular weights like 16 or 25 or something like that. That's usually the way that you encounter these. So square root of molecular weight is inversely proportional to the velocity of those particles and it's also inversely proportional to the rate of diffusion of those two gases. So if you're comparing two gases and the rates at which they diffuse, look at the square roots of their molecular weights and that will tell you the ratio of diffusion rates. And also the rate of effusion of these two different gases, usually within the same gas mixture. And if you're not clear on diffusion and effusion, I've come up with a fairly simple mnemonic device that I think can help you remember what these two things mean. Diffusion involves if you put a sample of something, how quickly does it kind of waft across a space? And so one example that you might see a lot is they'll have a cotton swab that is immersed in some sort of gas that you place into a chamber. And then the cotton swab will release those gas particles and they'll sort of move across the air or waft through space. In some cases, you'll see a question where they have two cotton swabs and both of the separate gases will both be diffusing across and then they'll meet in the center and form some sort of precipitate. And you'll be asked, where do they form that precipitate? And for that, you really need to know the ratio of how quickly they diffuse. Remember, the smaller, lower molecular weight compounds will diffuse very quickly. And so what we have here is just this dark line kind of represents like a cotton swab or some sample. And these little dots are kind of moving across, diffusing through the air. And you'll notice that this sort of forms a D shape. And that's just a simple way of remembering what diffusion is. It's usually going to be something from perhaps a cotton swab or some source of gas particles. And it measures how quickly they move through the air relative to other gas particles. The smaller ones will move more quickly. So it's a D for diffusion. Now effusion is a, is a slightly different concept. Effusion is when you have a gas in a chamber
and there's a tiny little aperture or hole that only one atom or molecule can fit through at a time. And what you'll find with that is that the rate at which different gases in a mixture move through that little aperture is going to be their rate of effusion. And the rate of effusion says that the smaller molecular weight compounds, the ones with the small square root of their molecular weight, will effuse more quickly. And so for effusion, the mnemonic device is simply, you see this particle kind of moving around in the chamber, bouncing off the walls and everything, until it eventually moves through that little aperture that existed. And so we just draw its path as kind of a, a lowercase e shape. And that's a way to remember that E fusion is the relative rate at which various gases will travel and escape through a tiny aperture that can only fit one atom or one molecule at a time. And so diffusion is the rate at which all these particles kind of waft across the air. And effusion is the rate at which these particles travel through an aperture. And both of these are defined by Graham's law, which says that the inverse ratio of square roots of molecular weights, these are inversely proportional to the relative velocities of these particles as well as their rates of diffusion moving across the air, wafting through space, and the rate of effusion, how quickly and with what regularity they move through an aperture that only allows one thing through at a time. And so that's Graham's law. It's all about the inverse of the square root of the molecular weight, and that's what matters when you're looking at various ratios of how quickly gas particles do certain things or how quickly they travel. One other thing that you might encounter is this formula right here, which stipulates that the kinetic energy of a mole of gas particles is equal to three divided by two times R and the temperature in Kelvin. R here is the gas law, and because we're dealing with energy, it's most likely going to be the joule per Kelvin times mole version, which is 8.314 joules per Kelvin times mole. But ultimately, the kinetic energy is going to be 3 over 2 times R, the gas constant, and T, the temperature in Kelvin. You may also see this expressed as the kinetic energy of your average particle within a gas. And the kinetic energy of that average particle is 3 over 2 times this K value, which is the Boltzmann constant, times temperature in Kelvin. The Boltzmann constant is a fairly simple thing. What it is, is it takes the ideal gas constant, which is represented for moles of gas, and it simply divides it by Avogadro's number. It takes R, divides that by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. And so that takes R, which is some measurement for a mole of gas, and instead changes it from something that applies to a mole to something that applies to an individual particle within that gas. And so 3 over 2 is the really good ratio to remember. And remember that kinetic energy relates to uh, the gas constant and to the temperature by if it's a mole of gas, the kinetic energy is equal to 3 over 2 times the gas constant times the temperature in Kelvin. And if you're looking at an average particle, you essentially take this and divide it by Avogadro's number. And that can involve using the Boltzmann constant, which is simply R divided by 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. So these are some of the last gas formulas and gas concepts that you'll be responsible for. Remember Graham's law and the relationship between the inverse proportionality of the square root of molecular weight. That's probably the trickiest one that students often get stumped by. But it's that the square root of molecular weight is inversely proportional to the rate of its velocity as well as its diffusion across space and its effusion through a small aperture escaping from one environment into the other.